Okay, this is part two video of simple digital logic circuits using the 4000 series CMOS logic gates. Now in this circuit we're going to look at next is a monostable. And I'm using a 4013D flip-flop. I'm using uh, one of the flip-flops in the package. There's actually two inside the chip. So what I could do with my push-button switch, I could create a positive going edge into the clock of the D flip-flop. An output will be a, a pulse that's variable uh, depending on the RC values that you see here. So if I press the button, if I press the uh, button, you can see I get a I get a pulse. So it's generating a negative going pulse, which is triggering my LED. Now that pulse is clean, has clean edges on both sides. Now we could vary that pulse length by changing this capacitor here. It's just an RC time constant, so I'll put another capacitor in here. The larger capacitor. So now we're going to get a longer, a longer pulse width. So just by changing one component, either the resistor or the capacitor, we could change the output pulse width of this monostable circuit. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my monostable circuit using a 4013 flip-flop. Now when the circuit is first powered up, the Q output is high, so the LED will be off. And the Q0 output will be low, and the capacitor will be discharged because of the diode would bleed off any charge on it through the, the low level on the Q0. Now the D input is, is grounded, uh, the reset line is grounded. Now when you push the push button, we'll get a positive edge into the clock. And when that happens, the logical level at D, which is logical zero, or ground, will be transferred over to Q, and that will turn on the LED. So Q will go low. At the same time, Q0 goes high, and starts charging the capacitor through the resistor. Now when the capacitor charges up to, this, to the threshold voltage to trigger the, the set line, it will shut off the LED, so Q will go high, and Q0 will go low, and just charge the capacitor to zero, then we can start the sequence all over again. Now if you make the output pulse greater than 10 milliseconds, you could actually use this circuit as a contact bounce eliminator. Okay, here's my next circuit. Now this is an A-stable oscillator or a free-running clock. Now, I'm using a 4093 Schmidt trigger NAND gate and it's wired up as an inverter. So with one inverter and two components, a resistor and capacitor, you could build yourself a free-running clock. So this is probably the simplest digital clock that you could build. Now to change the frequency of the clock, we can either change the resistor or the capacitor. Now right now I have two capacitors in parallel, so if I pull one out, we'll see the clock frequency increase. So there she's increased. So the duty cycle of this clock is almost 50% because it's a Schmidt trigger. The on and off threshold uh, voltages are different, which gives us hysteresis. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll hook up a scope to the output of this clock and we'll have a look at the waveform. Okay, here's the output waveform of my little ass stable free running clock, the RC inverter clock. And you can see the edges are pretty clean. And you can tell the duty cycle isn't exactly 50%. The on time is longer than the off time. That's because it's a Schmidt trigger uh, inverter that we're using. But usually when you're feeding a clock into, a, say, a flip-flop, you're only interested in the positive going edge to actually trigger a flip-flop, so the duty cycle really doesn't matter that much. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my little RSC free-running clock using a 4093 NAND gate Schmidt trigger. Now, I've configured the NAND gate as an inverter, by jumping pins 1 and 2 on the input, so that will convert this NAND gate into an inverter. Also did it over here, I built another inverter. Now this inverter is only used to drive the LED, so it won't interfere with the, with the clock circuitry, which is this, this circuitry here. So we have an inverter, a resistor, and a capacitor. Now when you first power up the circuit, the capacitor will be discharged, so we have a logical 0 on the input of the inverter, so we have a logical 1 on the output of the inverter. Now that will charge up the capacitor through the resistor, until this point here reaches the on threshold voltage. Now we'll have a, a zero on the output. Now that will discharge the capacitor th through the resistor. And this will happen back and forth. It'll alternate back and forth to get our square wave. Now because it's a Schmidt trigger, the on off threshold voltages are different. So that's why we don't have a, a perfect 50% duty cycle. Now I, I like using the 4093 and convert it into an inverter because I could actually use it as a gated clock as you can see the circuitry here. Now we could have a push button switch 
when we press the push button switch, it will enable the clock and we'll have a pulse train. And when we release the button, we'll have no pulse train. So it's like a gated inverter. So that's like a variation uh, on the circuitry. And if you use uh, 4093 NAND gate, we could actually uh, build this into the circuitry. Okay, I've added a push button switch to my 4093 free running oscillator and turn it into a gated oscillator. So every time I press the push button, it gates the oscillator on. And when I release the push button, the oscillator quits. Now instead of use, using a push button switch, we could use a GPIO pin of an Arduino Nano and we could actually gate an oscillator under microcontroller control. Okay, this is the last circuit that we're going to look at. Now this circuit contains the 4066 IC. It's a digital controlled switch. And it's a very versatile component. I've used it a lot. I've actually used it to switch audio. But in this case, I built a little latching on, latching off function switch. So one switch turns on the load. Another switch turns off the load and they latch. If you press them both at the same time, off wins. Now I've only using one of the switches in the IC. There's actually four of them. And the control circuitry and the load circuitry is isolated. So this will be a good component to use on Arduino Nano, you could actually have one of the GPIO pins of the Arduino Nano control some external device using the 4066 digital controlled switch. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my 4066 on off latch circuit. And this is one of the switches here. And pin 13 is the control pin. So when pin 13 goes high, the switch will turn on. It will have continuity between pins 1 and 2. Now when pin 13 goes low, the switch will open. Now when the switch is closed, we'll have, we'll have voltage from VCC through the switch, through the resistor and LED, and the LED will turn on. So we'll turn on our load. Now when we push the on push button momentarily, we'll have a voltage feed in the control pin 13. We'll turn on the switch, which will turn on the LED, and at the same time we'll feed a voltage back to itself to pin 13, and it'll latch itself on. So the 4066 will actually latch itself on and keep the LED on, even though the on push button switch is open. Now to turn off the LED, we press the off button, that will short pin 13 to ground, will take away the control of voltage from pin 13, the switch will open, turn off the LED, and the, the control voltage that's fed back to pin 13 will go to zero, and the switch will open and stay open, it will latch in the open state. Now if you press the on and off button at the same time, Without this resistor here, we would have a short, so we put a 2.2K resistor in here, so if you press them both at the same time, we won't short out the power supply. But, it will also, but the off button will also pull down pin 13 and keep the, keep the circuit off. So that's the circuit there. So that's a little example how a 4066 digital controlled switch works.